Hey everyone, it's Heather Marie Speaks, and I am here for a community spotlight with a special guest. Not only is May Mental Health Awareness Month, but it's also Military Appreciation Month. And I want to introduce you to my guest, Chris Poe, Christopher Poe also, with Poe and Company. And he's uh, been not only a sponsor for me as Miss Virginia, but he's also helped serve in our country, and he's got an amazing company that is oh so British. Mm -hmm. So we're here in my tea room, Queen Bee and Company, and I wanted to do a special spotlight with him for all the things that he's doing, as well as talk about mental health and resilience, because it's so important in this day and age. It sure is. Yeah, sure so is. welcome, Chris. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you, Heather, for having me here. Your Highness, thank you very much. <laughs> I really appreciate thank that. Thank you. Tell us, first and foremost, thank you for your service. Mm -hmm. Where did you serve, and how long did you serve for? So I started my service out of Boston in two, in uh, Boston, in I hear Boston, it. Massachusetts. Yeah, in um, 1990, okay. and I retired in 2019. So I did 29 years um, in a combination of the active duty National Guard and Reserve. Okay. So I'm recently retired, fresh out of uniform. Wonderful. And um, I have served. I mean, how much time do you have? Uh, <laughs> I have served in California and Washington, Colorado, and Kansas, and I've deployed multiple times: uh, Iraq, Afghanistan, for more than five years. Um, Bosnia, Cuba, Kuwait, and East Africa. So That's I've been amazing. The world. So, how did serving in the military transition you into English flat caps? Where did that come from? Right. So, I can tell you that it was in 2012 that I met a um, British lady uh, by the name of Christina, who is my wife. Okay. And um, it was 2012 that it was the very first time that I put a flat cap on ever. Wow. And um, Christina was very excited to um, put her American husband and soldier into a flat cap. Worked out for me well because as I retired out of the army, one of the things we always did was um, when you step outside, you've got to put something on your head. Yes. All right. And uh, that's sort of a rule. And so uh, with a, I was never a baseball cap wearer, to be quite honest. And so with a flat cap, I was like, you know what? This fits me. And so every time I stepped outside, I was happy to put a flat cap on, and that's where it started. It does fit you. You look quite dapper. Thank you so much. I love all things English. I spent some time as a child in England in the summers out there, and so I love the, the culture. I love the fashion. Um, and as a fashion-infused mental health advocate, I love to be able to incorporate that importance into people's mental health because we spend so much time on the outside taking care of our accessories, taking mm -hmm. care of how we dress. Um, but a lot of times we're covering up struggles and pain that we go through on the inside. And with May being Mental Health Awareness Month, um, we had talked a little bit when you sponsored me about wanting to spotlight the importance of mental health and resilience mm -hmm. because I know in the military, I'm also a mental health advocate on a board for the military in the Hampton Roads area. Mm -hmm. And it's a struggle. Our military go through so many different deployments and different life changes and it causes them to have to handle stress that can cause mental illness, it can cause depression, it can cause anxiety, or they can have underlying a mental illness in their family that has been unattended. And then going through those pressures can cause people to get into a suicidal state. Mm -hmm. So tell me a little bit about your history of seeing, um, whether it's been in the military or outside the military friends, that you've seen people that have gone through some struggles that they found the way to resilience and overcoming and what kind of words of advice have you given to them through that? Sure. Um, so I'm happy to do that. Um, I can say that, you know, even though we do talk about the military as being what we would expect to be very resilient individuals, yeah. they've gone through stressful situations and training and things like that, they are not uncommon to the regular human characteristics of dealing with uh, challenge and yeah. and can easily fall into depression. Um, it was in the mid 2000s where we started hearing the term post traumatic stress disorder, um, and um, actually focused on treating that. Um, but it was in the late 2000s something actually very novel happened. Um, the U.S. military started focusing specifically in the Army, which is where I come from, um, started focusing on a positive psychology as a way to combat the negative effects of dealing with challenge repeatedly over and over, like you mentioned, multiple mm -hmm. deployment separations from family. Um, and so it was in the late 2000s, I said, you know, what are we not doing yeah. to help train our soldiers to cope and deal with consistent challenge and with the war on terror that continued um, and the type of thing where there's no end in sight. Right. That's not uncommon to feel that way, even in general society. I mean, think of a law enforcement officer or an ambulance driver mm -hmm. or um, or somebody who's getting up and going to work every day to take care of their family. Yeah. You know, so they can feel the pressure of repeat, 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 keep going, persevere, persevere, persevere. Mm -hmm. So soldiers aren't very different. So what they did was we started actually focusing on not just the physical resilience of a soldier, which is how we how we taught resilience. Mm -hmm. We're going to put 80 pounds on your back. We're going to make you walk for 25 miles. And when you cry about it, we'll 
pretty much kick you until you get up. Yeah. And then you will learn to be more resilient. And we do. I'm a former drill instructor. I'm a little bit partial to some of those stressors. Yeah. But we also needed to focus on how do we train our brains? How do we ensure that soldiers are aware that social connections are equally as important mm -hmm. as your physical prowess when it comes to dealing and coping with challenge? Um, and so is your spirituality. Right. Um, and psychology tells us, you know, if it's if it's religion for you, you need to grow that. If it's not, what is your belief in something bigger than yourself? Right. Your your um, community, your mm -hmm. family, um, your culture. So my recommendations to not just soldiers and people that work in high stress environments, just to people in general as a matter of human performance, is to be self aware, mm -hmm. um, recognize when outcomes are they don't feel good. Right. You're, you're, you're consistently having conversations and they're not, um, they're not giving you the warm and fuzzy that you've coped with it in a way that's productive. Right. And ask yourself, why do I feel the way that I do? And is it possible for me to change my mindset from what we call um, a, a fixed mindset? Um, this is research from a woman named Carol Dweck, mm -hmm. um, where they, you know, she basically says that um, if you couldn't do it when you were five, you're not going to be able to do it when you're 40. Right. It's a very fixed mindset. If you try, it's not going to matter. Mm -hmm. That's a fixed mindset. And we try to shift folks to a growth mindset. Mm -hmm. You know, Michael Jordan, I'm sure you're, you're aware of the Michael Jordan story where he was cut from his high school basketball team at 16. Yeah. Something about that young man said, uh-uh. Yeah. I'm not going to let that be the end-all, be-all of who I become. Right. So finding a growth mindset and, and self-analyzing and, and without ruminating, Mm -hmm. without judging yourself too harshly and if you need to take a step back take a step back but keep looking at yourself and saying I don't like the way I'm feeling what can I change so that I can be more productive and feel better about the way I'm coping and dealing with life's problems right and it's also important too to be self-aware like we were talking about but if you're not able to change the things that you know need to change to go seek the help to do that and I'm a huge advocate of therapy going and talking to someone oftentimes people just need to be able to vent and get it out um, sometimes they need to have a conversation about w what is off balance, but my biggest um, encouragement is to have the mind, body, and soul balanced. Like you said, your mindset first thing in the morning, how are you feeling? If you're not feeling well, what are you focusing on that's causing you to stay in that mindset? Do we need to s switch the focus? Is it mm -hmm. time to pivot? Um, so often emotional intelligence has to come into play. I said this to you earlier emotions will fool you, your feelings will fool you. So you have to have your mindset knowing what's triggering me, why am I feeling this way? Mm -hmm. And if you're not able to diagnose that, again, go speak to someone. I'm not feeling so great. You could have hormones out of balance. Sure. You could have your diet out of balance. That's mm -hmm. part of the body, taking care of that. Your soul could be out of balance because you've been filling it with negative things your whole life where you've been around trauma. I am also a survivor of domestic violence and I got PTSD from being abused. And oftentimes people think, well, PTSD is a military thing. No, it's post-traumatic. There's some sort of trauma that's gone on in life. Mm -hmm. And rape victims, domestic abuse victims, child abuse victims. Um, there have been so many different people that have been out there that have dealt with this and not known where to go. Sure. So it's so important for people like you to be able to spotlight those things in the world as well as myself and my platform. And we create it in such a space that it's safe to talk about. Um, it's an important thing for people to talk about, especially not only just in a mental health awareness month, but in a daily mindset basis. Sure. So I love that you're um, sharing that resilience part, especially in the military. It's hard for sometimes the military to even talk about it themselves. Mm -hmm. So I think that's um, a great thing to just say bravo to you and thank you as well for. Thank you. Um, I love that Poe & Company is out there doing things. I see you growing and, um, and shining in resilient ways as well. Where does the whole mindset of your your um, your quality of products? Because you you present something of high quality, so it's not just I'm going to whip up a flat cap and call it something. Where did that come from, and how did you end up finding the um, the the business model, I guess, to make these designs? Your Highness, there's a great connection here. Okay. So let me explain that. So let's talk about the resilience of a flat cap. Mm -hmm. So if we look back through history at the type of folks that were wearing flat caps, we're really looking at the turn of the 20th century. Yeah. And these are immigrants that were seeking a better life. Um, they were seeking a new way of life and it was very common. I mean, it was standard practice that men and women did not go outside without yeah. something on their head. So the fashion trend was resilient in itself and look at it, it's rebirthed, mm -hmm. it's coming back. I mean, look at popular media. 
So when we decided to start Poe & Company, um, and again, as I mentioned, Christina uh, being from England, we were going to focus 100% on trying to stay as close to that tradition as we possibly could. My grandfather was a flat cap wearer. I've got yeah. a great picture of him uh, moving from Kentucky to Ohio during the Great Depression. Yeah. And he's got a little eight panel flat cap on, but you can see it. There's grit and determination um, in not just his eyes and his brother's eyes, but his parents' eyes yeah. in those days. So I love the connection of um, finding strength. Mm -hmm. Um, whether it's in a flat cap or whatever other accessory item you have, but finding that strength. So staying as close to that traditional quality was really important to us. Yeah. Um, so we chose not to manufacture them in, um, you know, in, in places that were trying to just shove them out the door. Yeah. So we like the handcrafted quality. We like to be able to know who's putting the caps together. We like to see somebody with a pair of scissors actually cutting that fabric. We visited the sheep farms, which you, you've been in England many, yes. many, many times, so you're very familiar with um, these traditional farmers that are still out there mm -hmm. trying to carry this forward yeah. um, in a world made up of polyesters and, and you know, artificial fabrics. Yeah. And if we're talking about renewable fabrics, mm -hmm. wools, cottons, linens. It's quality so versus it quantity. It really is, yeah. and it's, again, trying to maintain that sense of history and carry that flat cap forward without selling a product that, um, you know, it's all about making, making a dollar. Yeah. Because for us, it's really not. Yeah, I love it. Well, mm -hmm. thank you so much for supporting me on my platform with you're mental health well. and domestic violence, as well as with your company and resilience. And I love all of the things that you're doing. How can people find you on social media? PoeAndCompanyLTD.com um, is where you can find us on our website. And we are on Facebook, same name. Um, you can find us at Pose Flat Cap Pub on Facebook. So it's a place where we don't do a lot of selling, but we just like people that are enthusiasts in their traditional accessories. Um, oh, yeah, all of them. I mean, LinkedIn and Twitter and, um, and most recently TikTok. I'm I love getting it. more and more familiar with TikTok. There you go. So. Well, Google Poe and Company, find out more. You might see me donning a flat cap with my significant other on the side too. So I'm excited to be able to do a spotlight with Chris and make sure you follow him. Make sure you're taking care of your mind, body, and soul. May is Mental Health Awareness Month. And again, thank you for your service. May is also Military Appreciation Month. And until next time, we'll talk to you guys soon. Thank you very day. much and thank you, Heather. Thank you.